Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. What great love you, Father, have lavished on us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know you. Now we are your children, O oh God, and what we will be has not yet been made known, but we know that when you, Jesus, appear, we shall be like you, for we shall see you as you are. We have this hope in you, so we purify ourselves just as you are pure. That's just a slight adaptation of 1 John 3. And I would encourage you to pray that way, to take his words and put I and me and you in it. Um, it just brings it in. So much closer. Tell me the story of Jesus. Thank you. 
very hard some weeks. <laughs> This man had. This is the story of what had this man. 
what occupied supreme importance in his heart. You notice that Jesus didn't go into the ten, part of the Ten Commandments, the first part that were all about the relationship with God. He just mentioned the second part about the relationship with others, but the man only knew it as rules, as what you do and do not do. And that surely would get me into heaven. But Jesus wanted him to know it's not about what, but it's about whom, who has your heart. Who has your heart? Do you just know him up here? Or do you know him here? Knowing you, Jesus, there is no greater thing. <clears throat> Joseph, son of David, 
Do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife. I imagine this must have caused great torment for Joseph at the beginning when he was confronted with Mary's news. Because here was this good Jewish man. He'd only followed the law all his life. He was known for that. And now, here's his betrothed telling him she's with child and expecting him to believe this almost impossible story that God had caused this? But Joseph's heart belonged to God. Not to the rules he had so diligently followed. And that night when that angel came to him and said, Joseph, it's okay. God's got this and God's got you. And you were handpicked. You were handpicked for this position. To care for God's son on this earth and care for the mother that was chosen. And even though he didn't, couldn't understand what was ahead, he believed and he obeyed. And he knew Jesus as Emmanuel, God with us. A sign shall be given, a virgin will conceive, a human baby. Thank you. 
Does Jesus not know who this guy is? He, and he couldn't be anyone really God because he's gone to the house of this sinner. And Zacchaeus, ah, oh, his heart was so full. Do you know the story of the Grinch who stole Christmas and like the heart was like three sizes that day? And I think that's what happened to Zacchaeus. His heart grew three sizes that day. And he said, Lord, wasn't Jesus anymore he was Lord? Here and now, I give half of my possessions to the poor. If I have cheated anybody out of anything, I'm going to pay them back four times. Four times. He didn't have to do that. He didn't have to do that. His heart was so overwhelmed with the love Jesus had for him and this love that could be his only response back. And Jesus said to him, but also to all those who were listening, today salvation has come to this house. Because this man, too, for everyone else who thinks he doesn't make the cut, this man, too, is a son of Abraham. And the Son of Man has come to seek and to save the lost. His heart was changed without being asked. He was confronted with the love of God. And his only response could be love back. And his response was above and beyond. An encounter with Jesus definitely changes us. But it's our choice as to how that encounter will change us. Remember Mary? My soul glorifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. And if you remember over these past few years, we've talked a lot about spirit, soul, and body and how we're made up. And the body is the, the flesh part. Some of us have more flesh than we should have. But it's the flesh part. That was for me, okay? Like, you know, I'm not saying anyone else has more flesh than they need. Under these masks, I hope some of you are smiling. But anyways... But then we are made up with soul, and that's our, our mind, our will, our emotions. And generally, that's the control center of how you respond to everything. And then your spirit. Well, the spirit is the place that was made to be this God holder. And that's the only thing that satisfies. But when we come to Jesus, or when we want to come to Jesus, there's this battle over who's going to have the throne of that soul. Is it going to be our soul or is it going to be Jesus controlling that mind, will, and emotions and all the decisions that we make? And Mary, so long ago, before God came to her with this impossible task, her heart, her spirit was already rejoicing in God her Savior, and her soul was glorifying the Lord. That control center, her heart, was owned by God. And that's our choice, each and every day. Who has my heart? Who has my heart today? Is it my worries? Is it my family? Is it my, my job? Is it all the confusion and fear in our world right now? Or does Jesus have our hearts? And only he can work that in us. And our prayer has to be changed in my heart of God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God. May I be like you. And we know that's a that's a, a moment decision, but it's also a day by day decision as we go deeper and deeper into understanding what it means to be loved by God Almighty and what it means to love Him back. Because as we do this, we also do this, and He uses us to be bearers of that love.
with all those around us. Let's say this as our prayer. Change my heart.
so that our spirit can rejoice in you, God, my Savior. Thank you for this time of Advent where we can once again prepare our hearts to celebrate your coming and focus on your hope, the hope that comes from you alone, to respond in faith to that message and be filled with your peace, and your joy, even in the midst of sorrow and confusion and fear. And that your love is everlasting. It's lavish. It's lavish. It's extravagant. Help us to be lavish and extravagant with your love. Because our source will not run out. In fact, as we give it away, it will be an ever, ever um, bubbling spring that just is constantly full and, and flowing out, flowing from your throne through us to those we meet. May we be known as people of extravagant love. You gave everything. Father, you watched your son be treated worse than any tax collector. You had to watch him die to give everything so that we could be forgiven and get everything back. Oh, and it's really no trade at all because what we're leaving behind is worth nothing in comparison. Help us to know that. Help us to know that you are so worth it all. And then not only to know that for ourselves, but help us to be bearers of that good news. Help us to know you deep inside, from the head to the heart and out so that our whole life is spent And Holy Spirit, thank you for teaching us. Thank you for being our comforter, comforter, our counselor, our strength, our guide. Oh, we need you. We need you. And as our hope is in you, God, and all that you are capable of doing so much more than we could even begin to think or imagine. This is the best Advent, and this is the best Christmas ever. So thank you. We praise you. Thank you, Jesus, for making this all possible. Amen. 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 Love divine, all loves excelling. We're singing it to the tune of joyful, joyful people. Okay, so get that in your head. Joyful, joyful.
suddenly return and never, nevermore thy temple bleed. Be we would be always blessing. Serve thee as thy host above. Pray and praise thee without ceasing. Glory in thy perfect love. First one. Love 